Okay guys, this is how I would set up um, doing the experiments for the fiber identification by burning and by solubility. So I've got tons of fibers all set out and labeled really clearly. Um, that's easy for me. You will have much less, obviously. Um, I've got a little piece of tin foil down, aluminum foil, um, just as a place to kind of work so that I don't get the table burned or dirty or gross or anything like that. Um, I've got a little tea light candle. Um, any candle will work. Um, I've got a pair of tweezers. I feel like these are pretty essential because it's really hard to get your tiny bit of fiber or fabric into the flame without hurting your hands, without tweezers or something to hold it with. I suppose you could use uh, some scissors or chopsticks. I don't know, something like that. And then a lighter. Um, I've got little plastic containers for my chemical solvents. And so I've got them labeled with A, which is acetone. And I am just using nail polish remover, which is 100% acetone. Some nail polish removers are not acetone. They're specifically non-acetone. Um, so if you can find one that's acetone, that's ideal because that is the alkali that we need um, to get the results that we're looking for. So I've got that labeled A, and then I've got some generic bleach <laughs> that I have got labeled B, and that is our acid. So I've got all these little containers kind of ready. It really doesn't take much, just like a little bit of liquid, just enough to submerge your fiber. Um, and that should be enough to get us going. I'm using my phone as a timer so I can see how long the fibers are sitting in the different solutions. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is set up for my solubility test since I've got to leave the fibers in the chemical solutions for at least 30 minutes. So I can get that going first and then I can do my burning kind of while I'm waiting. So um, there's lots of fibers that I want to show you starting with the natural cellulosic fibers like um, cotton. Um, cotton looks just like what you would think, looks very similar you know, to a cotton ball that comes out of the top of a medicine bottle, except this is unbleached. It's still got kind of some like bits of seed in there, very natural looking. And I've also got a really cool one called Fox Fiber Cotton. And so they're a company that actually developed a way to grow cotton in colors. So this is grown orange. It wasn't dyed orange after the fact. They just figured out different ways to get kind of tints in the cotton. So like usually light colors like pale greens, pinks, um, orange, things like that. Um, so this I think actually would be really good to use in our experiment just because we can see what happens to the color, if anything. And so natural fibers are very much damaged by acids, by bleach. Similar to, you know, the way if we get bleach on our hands, it's going to burn, it's gonna hurt. It, you know, what happens is the bleach starts eating any organic material. So that's us, that's our skin, um, and that's also natural plant material like cotton. So I'm gonna take a little tiny bit and see I can just kind of pull those staple fibers apart right like you can see these are just little tiny fibers because look I was just able to like pull bits of it um, you know right apart and so I just really need like the tiniest bit right I'm gonna kind of bunch it up so I can see it a little bit better kind of make it into a little ball and I can put that in my bleach one of my bleach acid solutions and I'm just gonna make sure that um, <laughs> it's submerged, right? So I'm gonna like push it down in there <laughs> a little bit. And then I can make a note of what time I put that in, just off to the side. Okay, so um, like I said, any organic material is going to be eaten by acids, by bleach. So let's see if you know we get a color change or if we get um, it actually dissolving by that bleach. Um, another organic, you know, natural cellulosic material um, that's gonna be harmed by that acid is flax. And flax is um, from the plant. Um, 
that's going to be ultimately processed into the fabric um, linen. But so like this also, it's, it's very, it's like rope-like, you know, you can see how this is just a natural fiber. It, it hasn't been bleached. It's um, not uniform in color. Um, these strands are longer. The staple length of these fibers are longer than cotton, you know, before they like kind of break apart, but still ultimately um, can be, you know, look, I can sort of tear it apart and it just turns into to fluff. So we can also try putting some of the flax into our <laughs> bleach. I wonder if I need a little bit. Let me try a little bit more. And this, I'm just gonna again, submerge in there and see what happens. See if it starts to bleach it. If it starts, both of these, you know, have like a darker kind of khaki color. Um, so I can see if it takes the color away and I can see um, if it starts to just break it down and eat that material entirely. So I've also got um, some hemp. I'm not gonna do an experiment on that, but just wanna show you what it looks like. It's actually really similar to flax, hemp fiber. Um, the plants are really similar and the fiber ends up looking really similar too. It's, it's a rough fiber, like a rough texture, like you might think of like a sort of rope. And this is Raimi, um, it's similar. It's a little silkier. This one's a little softer, the Raimi, like a little more lustrous naturally. Um, but similar to cotton, but these are our sort of natural cellulosic fibers that I've got on hand. And then um, I've got tons of different wools and hairs. <laughs> so this is just some wool. Let me pull this out so you can see. And again, what you would think of wool, it's like fluff, just like fuzzy, furry, almost like a really... <laughs> you know, furry sheep, <laughs> exactly like what you would think. Um, so wool definitely is going to um, also have, you know, some harm if it's gonna go into uh, the acid, acid solution, but wool is also harmed by the alkali, by the acetone. So I'm gonna try some of that um, in there as well. So I'm gonna kind of ball this up and put this in my acetone so I can see what happens. And again, this hasn't necessarily been bleached. It happens to be white, but I think that wool is natural. Um, let's see if it gets any lighter. Let's see if the acetone breaks it down. It almost seems like right now, just getting it wet seems to make the wool stronger for a second. Um, and then aside from the wool, the straight wool, I've got lots of varieties of different types of sort of wools and hairs. Like this is some alpaca. Notice it's really crinkly, um, sort of a long hair. Some yak, <laughs> really fuzzy and dark. Um, camel hair, which is so nice. Oh my gosh, camel hair is so soft and lovely and has this natural kind of khaki camel color. Um, mohair is really nice and soft and angora. And some of the, you know, I think these are sort of hairs and furs. Oh, this is so soft, I wanna to touch it. <laughs> That's a, the terrible thing about this is you can't reach and touch these. Oh my gosh, it's so soft, like the softest thing you can imagine. <laughs> um, and these are from different types of goats, basically. Different, you know, goats with different types of hairs. Um, so they're all also, you know, they're natural. They're gonna be uh, degraded by acids um, and then may or, you know, may not have that same uh, property where acetone, the alkali is gonna harm them as well. And then I've got a little bit of silk. I um, wanna show you this again. This is our only natural fiber that is in filament form. So it's like, you know, long continuous strands. Now this is um, sort of been cut, but uh, so I can sort of pull it apart and it seems like smaller staple fibers. Um, but again, when, when silk is um, spun initially, it's gonna be spun in one long continuous filament. Um, silk is also harmed by the acetone. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there in our acetone alkali and see what happens to the silk. And that's our natural fibers. Um, so moving on, there's a couple of 
um, manufactured regenerated fibers obviously we can talk about. So rayon um, seems like a synthetic, you know, uh, and that's the thing, it's, it's manufactured um, fiber, but it is made from cellulose. So rayon will also be affected in the bleach. Um, the same with acetate, and here's some blue acetate, um, specifically chrome spun, uh, but this is also, it's made from cellulose. Uh, lyocell, which is a very new, or tencel, uh, very new fiber and has, you know, a lot of the properties of synthetic, but again, is cellulose based. So this will also um, break down um, in uh, acids just like another cellulose material. And we're actually gonna try, I think, a little bit of rayon in some of the bleach acid to see what happens, just so that we've got a good mix of natural and manufactured, um, and, and we'll do some synthetic. So I'm gonna put the rayon there. And now that we've even been kind of going a few minutes, I'm realizing some of my first samples I've had in there now a little over five minutes, so I can check and start to see what's happening, like which one. So this is the cotton, right? This is that cotton we put in. And I wanna say, like, does it look like it's getting lighter? Do you think it's bleaching it a little? We'd have to compare next to the, next to the original sample, and that's why it's gonna be really important to take those before and after photos as well. Um, but this is sort of what we started with. Uh, maybe it's the same, maybe it's the same. We'll see what happens overall. And then also our flax has been in there quite a bit. Uh, seems similar. I don't, I don't know if anything crazy is happening yet. Hard to tell. Um, the next one we did was the wool back here. That one hasn't quite been in five minutes and he seems about the same. <laughs> so we'll move on and we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so synthetic fibers are usually not going to be harmed by acids or bleach because that, again, it eats organic materials. It's not going to usually, um, you know, have effect on most synthetics. However, I uh, will say that nylon is supposedly affected, um, or at least uh, certain types more than others, Nylon is affected by bleach, by acid. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this nylon, which actually has quite a wool-like appearance, right? It looks very fluffy, but touching it, it's like rough. It doesn't feel, <laughs> it doesn't feel soft um, like the wool, definitely different. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. Ooh, and it has such a synthetic, like I can't even break it apart. Like this is the big difference. I, I'm literally <laughs> struggling. <laughs> to tear this apart. I might need scissors. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, I can't. I can't tear it. I gotta grab a... Oh, I wasn't prepared. Gotta grab a pair of scissors for this. So that is the difference between a filament that is spun, um, a synthetic filament, because you cannot just rip it like you could those short staple fibers. So this is a bit of nylon, and I'm gonna uh, put that in some bleach as well, and I actually ran out of space, so I'm gonna mix it with this, <laughs> with this cotton over here, because I figure I can tell the difference between the nylon and cotton. And then I'll make note of when that went in. Um, acrylic I've got, and you can see this also is meant to kind of emulate wool. Acrylic is usually like what most sweaters are made out of when they're supposed to be pretending to be wool. It has a really similar, you know, looks really fluffy. Um, and then here is some polyester. And so polyester, super versatile in everything. It's in these little crinkly um, short seeming fibers, but really only because it's been cut that way. Um, it also is long filaments that are endless. And again, it's meant right now to emulate something, you know, very soft and fluffy. And it has all that fluff feel to it. Um, it feels surprisingly soft. It's definitely shiny, definitely lustrous. And so acetone, the alkali, um, is supposed to harm this polyester. So I am gonna, whoops, get this guy in there and see if we can do some damage 
to him, see if that's what melts it. And I think of this like, you know, if honestly, like if you're putting, you know, fingernail polish on um, that is like an acrylic or basically a, a sort of plastic and you're gonna use your nail polish remover, your acetone to remove it. So I'm hoping that that, that acetone really does some significant damage <laughs> to the polyester and we see that it melts it. Um, and then the last fibers I wanna show you are some special use fibers, um, which I'm not gonna put any of those in the solvents, but I'll just show you them now too. I've got a little bit of uh, spandex, so I can pull that out. And this is just like what you'd think. I mean, it's like strands of spandex. It's so stretchy. It's like I'm holding a thousand tiny, 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 tiny rubber bands. <laughs> this stuff is crazy. I think we should burn that later and see what happens. Um, I've also got some Kevlar. This is the stuff that bulletproof vests are made out of. Um, so a really interesting special use fiber and fiberglass. And this, as you can see, look at this long <laughs> strand that they kind of put in this baggie. Um, but the fiberglass um, is literally, you know, spun glass. And um, we're gonna see what happens if we try to burn this in just a bit. And what I'll do is I'll let these all kind of sit in their solutions and um, we can sort of check back and see if anything exciting is happening to any of them at our different points. Um, at our five, we've kind of passed five minutes probably with all of them. Um, so we can check and see if at 15 minutes or 30 minutes we get anything exciting happening. Okay, so I've kind of moved my chemicals off to the side so that we can get down to business and start burning some stuff and see if we can do some fiber identification that way. So I'll go ahead and light my little candle, get that going. Um, you could also probably do this in like a, a metal bowl or a ceramic bowl or something like that. Um, but definitely having a candle helps or some way to keep the flame would be really good. So let's go ahead and start with our natural cellulosic again. So let's start with just some simple cotton and see what happens when we burn that. And let's use the, we'll use the white cotton this time. Okay, and we'll just get like a little tiny bit. And again, I can staple fibers, really short little fibers. So I can just pull that apart. And we're gonna wanna pay attention to what happens when it approaches the flame, when it's in the flame, when it's removed, and then ultimately the odor and kind of the ash that it leaves. Um, so let's just hold on to this. And, oh! My goodness, <laughs> that lit so much faster <laughs> than I was expecting. So I would say, I'd probably even want to test that again and say, okay, approaching the flame was like so quick. It's still embering. It's definitely smoky. It got really dark, definitely burned like so fast. That was insane. Maybe I got too close to the flame. Maybe this was like a better. There we go, but look, oh, it does not take much. Jeez, that would light right up. <laughs> and so it's soft, you know, like even it's, it's um, it burned away, it kind of burned to nothing, uh, but it's soft, it's ashy, it, you know, not dissimilar really to like burning wood. I've still got like a little bit of it left, but um, I could just keep going till it's gone. There we go, then I, now I'm really getting like a campfire smell. <laughs> so that was our wool, or sorry, that was our cotton, our cotton burning. Um, and again, so it um, definitely burns, it continues to burn and has an afterglow and it gets gray and feathery um, and definitely has like a burning paper, burning wood kind of smell to it. So, Let's move on. So that was our, like, maybe, you know, good example of cellulosic. Um, so let's move on to something in the protein family and really see the big difference. And I can even use, I'm going to go for something like a little different. Like, let's do some of this alpaca instead of like our, our regular wool. Ooh, very soft. 
very long. I'm going to kind of fold this to get it small. See if I can get it in here. So I'm going to try to do better about not letting this catch on fire immediately. There we go. I'm getting close and you can like I can see the little fibers start shrinking right away like as they're getting warm. Kind of this I mean again it, it likens to burning hair, which is exactly what it is. It just reminds you if you've ever like scorched a little bit of your hair and what it does. It kind of like crinkles it up and um starts to to melt it and burn it. So that's approaching and then Guess I'll go ahead and let it catch a blaze. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> and that just got real burned real quick. This burned really quick. And definitely ash. Like if I now put this down, it just turns to ash, like wood, like paper, like definitely an organic material. Um, I've still got a little in the center that like didn't ignite, but um, it's crispy. Ooh, it smells disgusting, like burning hair. <laughs> like, so gross. Um, hopefully if you have pets, you can like burn some of their hair and like, compare it to a wool. Um, or maybe you can find some wool, because it's a really specific smell. You could not mistake that with anything else. So here I've made a big mess. It's very ashy. Um, ooh, so gross. Uh, so yeah, the wool is going to curl away from the flame, right? And um, it definitely burned. It kind of put itself out, it did. And then it definitely has crushable black ash and uh, a burning hair smell, you know. So I'm just going off of kind of those sheets that I sent you, the fiber identification guides. Um, and it's, it's accurate, you know, it's definitely doing what it says it's supposed to do. Um, I could burn a little bit of silk and see what happens there. Right, let's try a little bit of our lustrous, soft, so silky silk fibers. Clean all this yucky stuff off. There we go. So let's see, I'm approaching. Oh, and the same, it's kind of shrinks away. Very similar to the wool, honestly. Very, again, the protein fibers definitely have a similar way that they behave. And this just kind of goes away so quickly. And now if I'm really catching it a fire, like it looks like now there's almost like nothing left to even burn. Ooh, it kind of just disintegrated. <laughs> but also ash, it's turning to like crumbly, crumbly ash. Um, so, you know, again, this is how you could tell if you couldn't tell if something was like, say, real silk. Um, if then you, you know, seemed shiny, um, that would be a good way to really tell because when we do synthetics that are meant to emulate silk, we'll see a real big difference. So let's see what would happen with um, one of our manufactured um, fibers that are also still made of cellulose, but are manufactured. So for example, let's try some of this acetate, right? Let's see. It's bright blueness. What's gonna happen? Whoa, that's crazy. It like really shrinks away. Ooh, catches real quick. And let me see what our final result, how it feels. Um, feels a little, maybe a little ashy. Oop, I dropped it. It's gone. <laughs> it's like gone completely. Um, so it definitely melts and shrinks away from the flame, um, and it, uh, it definitely melts a little bit more. And it's hard to tell, but rather than being ashy, it's sort of um, just kind of melting up, almost seems a little bit more thermoplastic in that way. So even though this is a cellulose, I'd say, you know, it, it wasn't really behaving exactly like, like the others. Um, but let's test some more. Let's try some polyester, the big, the big one that we know is plastic <laughs> and we know will have thermoplastic properties. And let's just see what it's going to do. So polyester, big piece of it. Ooh, I mean, I am just like getting 
close to the flame and it's just like curling up and shrinking. Oh yeah, look, it's like changing shape entirely, just being near it. This reminds me if you've ever accidentally ironed a shirt that was like all polyester and had a hot, too hot iron and just burned the thing. And so now let me just put it in the flame and then a big difference with this is look, it's, it's gonna melt. Ooh, wow, it just melted into a plastic puddle. Like I could paint with this now. And it's like strings, I'm making filaments. <laughs> this, it just turned into complete plastic. So what felt so soft a second ago is now a hard plastic um, blob. Right, let me see, I could probably remelt it again and form it into a different shape. And get it to, oh look, I've got like a drip, a beautiful droplet. <laughs> I'm literally painting with it. So yeah, this is the big, big, big crucial difference. Um, you might not be able to tell the difference when you are feeling silk and polyester. They feel so identical, they look so identical, but you burn them and nothing organic, nothing natural is going to turn into a ball of plastic that melts in your hand, quite like um, synthetics do, and especially polyester. So that's the big, big difference that's really exciting to see and kind of awesome. That would be the way to tell for sure if it's got those thermoplastic properties. We can try some other ones. Um, let's try some acrylic. I'm assuming going to do pretty much the same thing. But let's give it a try. I'm kind of, again, yeah, it just shrinks away. And then just, oh, dripped right off of, uh, out of my tweezers and stuck <laughs> to the side of the candle. It definitely burns um, quite a bit. Oh, and it's like almost, it's like gone. The acrylic definitely um, burned to less, you know? It got, ow, got, <laughs> it was really hot. It got down to nothing. I think because too, like look how, um, sort of lofty this acrylic is spun and it, I was using probably less than I thought I was but it looked bigger because it was like trying to emulate wool whereas the polyester was a little more tightly packed. Um, what else can we try that might be fun? Ooh, this is what I, I wanted to try burning the spandex. I'm not sure if it does say, it says this is gonna melt. I'm spoiling it for you. Oh, I'm gonna need scissors. Oh, no, I, I could break it. Okay, it's not as strong. And this is why I guess spandex isn't always, you know, used on its own. It's usually mixed with another fiber. So let's see what happens. I'll try not to spoil it. Oh, wow. Shrinks right up. Oh, yeah. Also melts. Turns into liquid. <laughs> liquid burning. Got a little spark to it. I think it's gone. I think it's gone. I guess there was so little of it, we kind of can't tell what happened, but it definitely melts, definitely burns. Um, and this actually says, turns into a soft black ash. And maybe that's why we kind of can't see it. Maybe it's just soft black ash on the edge of my tweezers. Um, for fun, because we're here, let's do it. Let's try to melt some Kevlar. I'm actually not, I can't remember what's gonna happen. Um, if any of, if it's going to melt, but let's see. I don't think it says it on any of my cheat sheets. Whoa. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to set my house on fire. <laughs> this catches fast. Definitely different. Interesting. And gets a little ashy. This is not melting the way that the other sort of synthetics are. Um, the Kevlar is, I would say, it's more ashy. And the feel of it, honestly, it reminds me of like insulation. You know, it's, um, but yeah, that was definitely a slightly different response, but does burn. So we can't pretend that that's like totally fireproof. And now I want to try out my fiberglass glass fibers. So let's see 
How many? <laughs> this is hard to pull apart. Okay, these are just really long filaments, like the longest ever. I'm gonna fold this so I can grip it and see what happens. It kind of curls a little bit, but doesn't want to catch on fire, if you see that. I mean, I am holding it in the flame and it's like curling, but look, it is not, it is not catching on fire. So this is why a lot of curtains are actually made of fiberglass. And it sounds like, why would anyone ever do that? But this is why, because look, I, it is like, in a flame and still would not burn your house down. Like it isn't even hot over there. So that's pretty awesome. It did do some damage. It did curl the ends. Um, but the fiber is remaining and it didn't totally catch on fire. It just kind of messed it up, made it not like pretty kind of crumbled on this side. But I'm sure if, you know, if you had a raging fire, but this is definitely a better bet than most fibers if you were gonna have something in your home that you didn't wanna catch on fire. Okay, so I've burned all the things I feel like burning. Okay, so I've moved some of our fire stuff out of the way and now my hands are all like sooty and dirty and gross, but we're gonna, and my tweezers are really gross, but we're gonna check on, maybe I should just clean them in the bleach. No, it's not working. Um, we're gonna check on our, our fibers. So we've had um, the cotton now, the fox fiber cotton in the bleach for definitely 30 minutes. And remember that it started like this. It was, it's orange. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's, it's pretty dark. And now check this out. It definitely got bleached. It is definitely pretty close to white. So the color went away. Um, let's play with it. Ooh. It's hard to say if it's dissolving, degrading. Um, it definitely seems like it's not doing great. <laughs> definitely seems a little smaller. Um, and I'm sure if I left it in here indefinitely, like it would just disintegrate. I feel, I feel weirdly confident about that. Um, but definitely the color was bleached out and that was really easy to see. So it's eating away, you know, at the outside of that. Um, and then our flax also um, looks a little brighter than it started. It was also a kind of khaki color to start, you know. And now look at that. It's definitely the color's been bleached out of it. Um, and basically what it's doing is weakening the fiber. That's how it's taking the color. It's taking, you know, it's outside layers and weakening it down. So if we like pull, rinsed it and sort of pulled on it, you know, we'd probably have weakened it a little bit. We'll leave it in there and keep seeing what happens. Um, what have we got? We've also got our wool in acetone. Now it doesn't seem to have much effect, but this is supposedly, supposedly weakened by acetone. So I wonder if it's like easier to break or more brittle, maybe needs even some more time. The solubility tests aren't as exciting as the fire. It's not as immediate, <laughs> but in theory, this is, this is sort of degrading or harming that wool, not making it quite as strong. Um, another one we've got is the silk in the acetone. And I feel like I've seen definitely the silk before have its color removed. Um, let me see if it feels strong. I mean, silk's so weak to begin with. I feel like it's just a weak fiber. Silk is harmed by bleach, it's harmed by acetone, it doesn't really love to be washed, it doesn't really love to be handled. I mean, it's a delicate, delicate fiber. Um, it feels similar to me, but could be weakening it. Uh, the next one that we did, I think, was our bit of rayon, which I think is here in the bleach. It seems similar to the rest. It's almost like it gets this like gooiness around it. I think the bleach is um, 
sort of, you know, eating it and then, oh yeah, it, f it feels like slimy. It's hard to explain. Um, so I think it's eating it, definitely eating that cellulose and kind of like <laughs> turning it into slime. Um, ooh, so smelly. Uh, the nylon, I think, is what I've got back here that's also mixed in with the cotton that was also supposed to be broken down by the bleach. Eh, it hasn't been as long. How long has that nylon been in there? Only maybe 25 minutes, maybe less. So I want to see if it can do some more damage. And then this last one is my polyester in the acetone, which also has not been very long, not, it's been like 20 minutes maybe. Um, let's see if it feels weird. It doesn't feel slimy, it doesn't feel broken down yet. I think these need to go a little longer. But basically what I want you to do is set up like I did. Um, again, I'm just even gonna show you my cheat sheet. Where is it here? Look, I wrote down <laughs> what time on my phone that I started these things. Um, and I'm just keeping a loose, you know, track. Um, so that's what you can do. You can just kind of be looking on the side. You can be burning while you're doing it, or you can do them separately. And I want you to just write down what you see, write down what happens. I definitely want you to take a before and after. You can wear rubber gloves if you don't want to touch stuff. Um, that it'd be nice if you can kind of play with the fibers and pull on them, see if they got weaker, see what happens. Um, again, you know, it's, it's household bleach. You can touch it. It's not terrible, but wash your hands afterwards for sure. And then same acetone. I mean, we put it on our fingers when we take our nail polish off but it's also you know not super great for you so make sure you wash your hands if you combine these two it gets really hot and crazy science happens so um, you could do that for fun or not do it specifically <laughs> when you're cleaning up to save yourself um, but yes record your findings show me before and after photos um, try to have fun with it and uh, see if anything cool happens. See if you feel like a forensic scientist and if needed, you could identify different fibers, you know, blind without having, you know, the label on them telling you what they are. See if you could make a hypothesis for the fibers that you find and, uh, you know, see if you could support it. All right, good luck. I'm gonna clean up my messiness.